Take the cinematic, whimsical tone of Spirited Away, add the corruption of innocence from Coraline, and mix that all with the grotesque figures in the dystopian universe of Bioshock, and you have all the ingredients necessary to creating the awe-inspiring title known as Little Nightmares. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know what to expect when I first purchased this game, but for someone who has a huge love of horror, fantasy, and the world of the disturbed, I feel like this game was perfectly catered to suiting all of my needs. And if I'm being frank, I think I enjoyed Little Nightmare so much that it might be one of my favorite games I've played all year. And I'm seriously looking forward to having the chance to just sit down and play this game all over again. And without spoiling anything substantial, I'm making this video today to let you guys know why this game should be on your radar, especially if you enjoy stuff that's just a little bit strange. Little Nightmares is a puzzle platformer horror adventure game developed by Tarster Studios and was published by Bandai Namco for the PlayStation, Xbox One, and PC on April the 28th, 2017, and was released on the Switch May 18th of the following year. In Little Nightmares, you play a young child named Six who wakes up trapped in the lower depths of the Maw, a mysterious vessel that supposedly caters to the whim of sick and powerful creatures. The gameplay follows your escape through the vessel as you must find your way to the surface while encountering all sorts of weird and uncanny creatures. All of these guys have a very sick and grotesque look to them. Oh, it's disgusting! And reminds me a lot of the gluttonous or manic-like creatures seen in Spirited Away in Bioshock. Literally everything in this game wants to consume you. Speaking of everything wanting to eat you, I want to start off by talking about the lush atmosphere and environment of this game. Everything in Little Nightmares is bigger than you, and in order to navigate through the different rooms of the vessel, you have to use your small stature to interact with everything in the room, as most rooms have their own miniature puzzles that need to be solved in order to pass through. A lot of the times the objects and furniture contained within the rooms not only serve as a nice visual, but there are also key items to be utilized to helping you solve the puzzles in each area. You really have to think outside the box and use all of the found objects to your disposal. Oh, excuse me sir, I don't think you're gonna be needing this anymore to catch my drift. Okay. You need to stand on objects, pick up and throw items to turn on switches, and climb over crates in order to make it from one point to another. Not only does the game have a lush environment ripe for exploring, but the cinematics of this game and the camera angles are wonderful to look at. Everything looks like a surreal dreamlike sequence. I felt like I was watching a movie much of the time from the game's interesting dollhouse-like perspective and through their use of camera blur for the foreground and background on certain shots. I really appreciate the cinematic shots as the entire game goes without character dialogue, and heavy use of camera techniques are a wonderful way of pushing the narrative forward and conveying certain emotions and tones without the use of verbal language. The rooms of the vessel all seem to contrast yet complement each other nicely for this game. Some rooms are very closely designed to look like a children's nursery, which really captures the innocence and that feeling of being inside of a dollhouse, but also very easily elicits feelings of discomfort because of how bleak and lifeless the rooms are. While some of these rooms appear live-like and innocent, without the presence of life, other parts of the vessel are filled with cold, dark corners, echoing rooms, and prison chambers. And this juxtaposition not only had me uncertain of what to expect as I traversed throughout the game, but the contrast itself made me feel like the rooms that were supposed to be warm were actually a farce of the actual terrors that were brewing behind the scenes. The music in this game is phenomenal. It's used so perfectly and adds a good amount of suspense and eeriness to the game. Some of the tracks seamlessly blend childlike mischief and terror really well, and other tracks are composed primarily of ambient drips, creaking doors, sounds of the wind, and ominous echoes from enemies within the vessel. I particularly love their use of ambience along with certain drum patterns that mimics the sound of a beating heart. This added to my genuine fears about what awaited me behind different corners as I went through with my escape. 
I got a huge adrenaline rush having to balance stealth movements and trying to avoid the AI. The AI in this game is very sensitive and they have an incredible amount of range that I wasn't expecting. They can be alerted quite easily if you happen to make a sound near them or say knock over something with an earshot. They'll come running to investigate the noise and this sometimes made puzzles very difficult to get through because I was unable to really interact with everything in that particular space because I was more concerned with concealing myself from being discovered. So in some instances, you don't really have time to investigate things around you, and I feel like this element not only created extra adrenaline, but also added a fair bit of realism to the whole experience. Huh? Whose footprints are these? Whenever I got stuck in this game, I never felt discouraged, as you're given quite a bit of props to work with when trying to figure out the different puzzles in the room. So if one approach didn't work, usually you'd be provided with things that would force you to come up with more alternatives to finding ways around enemies and puzzles. That being said, I never felt like this game was holding my hand. But rather, it very discreetly left hints for me that I would eventually pick up on through my use of trial and error. My only gripe with this game was that sometimes the save points were a little weird. I'd save in one room and then die only to wake up further back from where I started, which was kind of strange. This didn't happen all the time, but it was just kind of odd to me, and sometimes I'd end up having to redo parts of a task that was a little tedious to have to repeat. Other than the save points being weird, I also had some issues with the depth perception in certain rooms. A few times my blind jumps or simple acts of running from one platform to another would cause me to plunge to my death, and it would happen happen often at the most random of times. Again, I'm not really sure if this is an issue purely with the game's mechanics or if this is just a me issue, because when I play games, sometimes I have issues with depth perception. <laughs> See you later, suckers! Woohoo! <laughs> Whether intentional or not, the result of this controller sensitivity made me a lot more careful when creeping around areas that looked seemingly secure, so not to fall, due to a clumsy or careless action on my own accord. So in a way, it kind of worked with the type of game I was playing. Little Nightmares has a slightly open-ended and ambiguous ending. By the end of everything, I found myself asking stuff like, what is the identity of the mysterious woman and what's her relation to the maw? Where did these leeches come from? Who are these children? Who are the gnomes? Are they friends or foes? And why do I have debilitating hunger pains? Oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, hey there, little buddy. Is that for me? Oh, thanks for looking out. You're such a... Overall, it takes around three to four hours to finish the game, and you'd really think that its length would act as some sort of hindrance, but I found that the game itself and all its elements were so engaging that it didn't leave me unsatisfied, but rather made me yearn for more material without feeling like I was cheated out of a longer story. By that I mean, yeah, the length of the game was short, but the game offered enough content that if I played through it a second time, I'd be satisfied because there would have been stuff I overlooked the first time that I could really get into and better analyze on my second playthrough. Similarly to the gluttonous creatures, I was hungry for more content and was pretty excited to find out they had followed up the game with extra DLC that tied in with the universe of the first game. I strongly considered purchasing this extra content for the mere fact that the world of the Maw and Six's adventures was a really engaging experience through and through, and I was curious to find out a lot of the mysteries that the original game had left unanswered. And that was my spoiler for your review on Little Nightmares, a game that I really enjoyed and I'll definitely be playing it again in the near future. If you like suspenseful horror and adventure, then I feel like you might really appreciate this title. So you know, check it out! Again, for me personally, I think it's an absolute masterpiece. And apparently, no surprise at all, it's getting some kind of film adaptation and Henry Selleck is going to be one of the creative forces behind it. For those of you who don't know, Henry Selleck was the artist behind films like James and the Giant Peach, Coraline, and The Nightmare Before Christmas. So I'm really excited for that because I love stop motion. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the work that I'm doing, maybe consider donating to my Patreon, which can be found in the link in the description box below or at the end card of this video. Until my next video, I'll see you guys next time.